So we're going to provide an overview of the on-campus process and a timeline, as well as new services and resources that we have for students if they're th looking to move off campus. Um, and our on-campus housing is through, the process is through our housing portal. Um, and Michael Wilcox is our resident guru on the housing portal. So I'm going to have him talk about our Panther housing selection process. Okay. Uh, the Panther housing selection process um, is the process for all current students to select their on-campus housing uh, for next year, as well as their roommate. Um, the entire process is online. The first step is to complete an online application. Um, those applications are currently live um, on the housing portal, and the due date is Monday, March 14th. Uh, the second step uh, after they complete the application is that they will receive a housing selection time slot. That's a date and time for them to return to the housing portal and to select their housing assignment and to sign their uh, license agreement uh, for the 11-12 academic year. Uh, the first uh, priority for um, all on-campus housing for continuing students, which includes the Sandu Residence Center, the Glass Hall, as well as South Moreland Hall. The first priority group is all uh, future sophomores, so those are students who are currently a first year student. Uh, the second group is out of area juniors and seniors. That's anyone whose permanent address is beyond 30 miles from the Chapman campus. And then the third group is in all in area juniors and seniors. Good question. Yes. Does this mean that this is a priority list, so sophomores get a preference over juniors and seniors? Yes. They do. And yeah, because um, we, I, you know, I, I would love to, anybody that wants housing, I want to give it to them. Um, we may get to a point where there's a group of students that will need to live off campus, and we feel like juniors and seniors are in a better place to do that than sophomores are. Just, you know, they, every year they grow so much, and um, so we feel like if that's, if there's anybody that we're not going to be able to accommodate on, on campus, then we want to try to um, have that be the students who are most prepared to do that. <clears throat> and then in our Davis and Harris apartments, um, the, for th those uh, living areas are prioritized for juniors and seniors. Um, those are apartment communities with uh, f uh, full kitchens and not on the meal plan. Not what? Not on the meal plan, because they do have a full kitchen. And then a special housing accommodation process. So um, while this is going to be the basic priority <coughs> structure for housing selection, um, we also understand that there may be special circumstances such as a student who is from out of the, an out of area junior or senior, but they don't own a car, they're not able to drive, or commuting from home is not an option. Um, so uh, in those situations, they can definitely come and talk to our office and we will work with them. Um, in addition, we may have students who have a specific medical need um, for a specific type of room, maybe a room with a private bath or a room with a kitchen. And so um, in, in the housing application, they can indicate if they need a special housing accommodation, and then we can work with them to try to accommodate their needs. So the first step is to submit the application. The application went live uh, this past week on February 22nd and is due March 14th. Uh, that's a Monday by 11.59 p.m. Uh, this is a hard deadline, so please uh, don't let your students miss it. Uh, don't worry, they are well notified of the process um, via email um, and posters and flyers throughout um, the residence hall area as well as the dining commons. Um, they, um, to apply, they would access the uh, Chapman Housing Portal, which is available online at this website and uh, they will need their Chapman username and password, the same uh, information that they use to log into WebAdvisor or Panther Mail uh, to log into the Chapman Housing Portal. The second step is to receive their housing selection time slot. So as I said, that's a date and time that they'll go back in to pick their room. Future sophomores, current first year students will receive their time slot via email on March 24th, and current sophomores and juniors, future juniors and seniors will receive theirs on April 6th. The third step, opening on March 21st on the Chapman Housing Portal, is the online roommate selection. And so what that means is they'll be able to go online and pick the person that they want to live with for next year. Uh, they will be able to search um, specifically by name. Um, if they have someone specific they want to live with, if they don't, they can browse roommates and the system will automatically show them other applicants that are a strong match with them based on their roommate matching questions that are a part of the application. And then the fourth step is to return to the portal to pick their housing assignment electronically and to sign the RLLA. Uh, one common um, misconception sometimes is students will complete their housing application um, and will think that that's the only step. And they need to make sure that they are checking their Chapman email regularly 
so that they do receive that time slot and remember to go back into the housing portal to pick their room and sign their license agreement for next year. So you, you get your time, you sign your roommate on the 21st and then you get your time slot on the 24th? <coughs> yes, that's correct. Okay, so step two and three are and they're already finding their, a lot of them are already finding their roommates, so, yeah. Yeah, the 21st is just a formality for them to go online and make it the roommate matching formal. Okay, a little bit are about our Sandu living learning communities. These are themed areas that are in the Sandu Residence Center. Uh, they include the Expedition or Outdoor Adventure LLC, the Greenhouse Sustainability Community, uh, Entrepreneurship, which has a business focus, Global Village, the Arts Initiative for Fine and Performing Arts, and Film and Media Arts. <coughs> uh, students will uh, be selected for a living learning community based on their responses to supplemental application questions. So as part of the housing selection application, they will let us know if they're interested in any of these themed areas. And if they are, then they'll be required to submit um, additional short answer questions. And then we'll, um, our staff will be reviewing those uh, responses and selecting students for those communities. Uh, students can only apply for one LLC, and students will be notified of their requested um, if they were uh, selected for that LLC on March 18th via email. If they are not selected for their LLC, they'll still be able to select from the general non-themed living areas um, in Sandy Residence Center, Glass Hall, and Southmoreland Hall, and then future juniors and seniors will have the Davis and Harris apartments to choose from. The Greek housing community for students who are Greek affiliated or are part of fraternity or sorority life. Uh, students can apply for the Greek community in the Glass Hall um, apartment suites and they will need to submit the name of their chapter affiliation in the application. Are there any, um, before we move on to off campus, are there questions that you all have about the on campus housing selection process? Yes. The question is, I'm going to repeat it because they're taping it. The question is, um, the Davis and Par Harris apartments, what are they like? How old are they? What are their um, kind of specifics about them? Davis has one bedroom and two bedroom apartments. Um, the vast majority one bedroom apartments. There are a few two bedrooms, um, but mostly one bedroom apartments. Um, I, Davis and Harris are, are old, they're older in terms of most of our, a lot of our housing was built basically since 1994 or earlier. Um, and these, those are, those, I don't know exactly when they were built, but I would say they were built in the 70s. Um, and maybe Harris a little bit earlier than that. Um, but they are extremely popular. Davis's, uh, their the apartments are pretty, I think they're pretty darn spacious for mm -hmm. apartments. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, students really like living in Davis and Harris apartments. So I hope that that answers your question. They have full kitchens, one yeah. Bath, one bath for both, for one. Okay, tub, shower, both. Tub, tub in both of them, right? Tub, tub shower combination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And furnished? Yeah. Other questions about the on-campus housing selection process? Yes. The one bedroom um, is for two students, two bedrooms. Right, so the question is, how many students live in each of the types of apartments? And yes, the one bedroom apartment is for two students. In, um, in Davis, we have, like I said, a very few number of two bedrooms, and they can have, they can have four if they want, but their minimum is requirement is three, because one of the bedrooms is bigger than the other bedroom, so. And the two bedroom itself also has its one bathroom? Yes. Yes. Sophomore next year, the Sandu and the Glass are they are they two student um, rooms or three students or four students or how does that work out? So the question is, what are the room types in Sandu that are available? Um, in Sandu we have and Glass, sorry. Um, in Sandu we have kind of traditional residence hall rooms. So there's two students to a room. Um, we also have single rooms that share a bath, so the student would have their the bedroom to themselves and then they'd share a bath with their neighbors so the bath would be shared with two students. Um, we have what are called quad double suites where there are two bedrooms, two baths and then they share a common living area. Um, those, those have a refrigerator but they don't have a full kitchen. 
um, but they do have kind of a living room space. And then we have what, what are called quad single suites where there are four single rooms that share a common living area, and those are for four students. So that's what's in Sandu, right? Did I cover all of them? Um, glass, there are traditional residence hall rooms um, where there would be two students in the room sharing a bathroom. And then we have uh, quad double suites where there are two bedrooms where two students share a bedroom and then they share a common living area where they do have a, they have a cooktop, a microwave, and a refrigerator. Um, it's not a, it's not a, it doesn't have an oven, so it's not a completely full kitchen, but yeah, those students are not on the meal plan either in the glass apartments, unless they want to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my son's in a double quad and he was on the meal plan. But as far as the sand do, what kind of kitchen facility is in these quad suites? In the, the kitchen facilities in sand do, there is kind of a prep area and there is a refrigerator, but there is not cooking facilities in there. So students are required to be on the meal plan in the Sandu suites. Yes? Um, I don't know, but it, I think I'm understanding that when you get your slot assignment, you're, are you able to select the room type that, if you have an early number, you get to select the room type that you want to go to, except if you get a later number, then you have to take what's left. What's left. Right, and so the question is, how's it going to look when they get on their time slot and figuring out what's available? It will show up when they go into the, the portal, and Michael can talk about this because he knows this way more than I do, but though it'll, what the room, what's available, they'll be able to see. If something isn't available, to, I mean, if they can't see it, then it's not available. Um, I don't know if you want to say more about that. Um, sure, so basically when um, their time slot occurs, they log in and they'll see a list of buildings that are available to them. Um, and then they'll click on the building and then a floor plan comes up and they can see what is available, uh, click on the room if they want and then assign themselves to the room. So a, a parent in the earlier session um, associated with kind of like picking an airline seat when you're making reservations where you, they show the airplane and you just pick the seat, it's a little bit similar to that. Mm -hmm. And when you're picking your roommate, um, do you, so, so they're gonna select roommates and but then one of the roommates Two couple questions here. So, do you pick just one roommate, or can you pick three roommates to, to go for the doubles or the quads? And then, what happens with, you know, let's say the, the simple case where you've got two roommates um, you've identified, and one has an early number and one has a later number. So the early number is able to grab the room, and then that, that then the later guy just gets in, um, no problem. So the question is, how does it work with roommates in terms of the number of roommates that you need to pick, and then what, which time slot do roommates go in and pick their rooms? Do you want to field sure. that question? Uh, so um, as far as um, how many roommates, uh, students can select as many roommates um, technically as they choose to. So if they had, we always recommend that students have you know, a plan A, B, C um, in case they're not able to get the housing accommodations they want. Um, or as their first choice, and so um, say they're, they have plan A roommates and they select those and they can plan B roommates, so there's not a limit to how many students they request as their roommate. Um, the only thing that um, governs that is the number of spaces in the housing assignment they select. So say they have you know five students that are linked to them as possible roommates, but they pick a double room, then they'll select one of those five roommates to go into the room with them. And then as far as which uh, time slot they would go under, um, whomever has the best time slot will be able to select the housing assignment for everyone involved. So once students select each other as roommates online, their housing applications become linked. And so whoever gets the best time slot will be able to select the room and then one of the steps of the selection process will show them these are your selected roommates and then they assign them to the room with them. Okay, so the, for example, uh, let's say my son has an early number, he, he gets the room he wanted and depending on whether he picks a room with one roommate, he could say, I want, I want Joe to be my roommate, or he might pick a room with three other roommates, and he could say, I want, I want you know, A, B, and C to be my roommates, and then once that's done, then, then they're in. Okay, that's correct. thanks for the mm -hmm. good description. Mm -hmm. So you recommend if they all agree they want to be roommates together, that they all choose each other, and that way they're more guaranteed that they, at least some of them will be roomed together. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions that you have about on campus, the on campus process? Do you all have um, students who are looking to live on campus, live off campus? Are they still deciding? Live I on? Questions who live off campus. Living off. 
So that's a that's a negotiation point right now between you and your son or daughter. Yeah. Um, okay. So off campus, um, the university we just got approved for a new housing assignments coordinator, off campus housing assignments coordinator position. So um, these so we can help students with that with that transition process. Um, we do have some search pieces on our website right now. We're going to be upgrading all of that in the next month or so. Um, to give students more resources and you know know what's in the area as they're looking for that um, we have apartment complexes up there we also have a place where landlords come can come on and list um, you know if they have a specific house or if they sometimes they have just a room in the house that they want to rent um, so we have that but we're going to be beefing that all up to help with those students who may be moving off campus um, okay uh, we are, like I said, we're going to be promoting off-campus housing opportunities, um, connecting with local landlords and providing networks and activities. We plan to have kind of some so, some social pieces as well for students because um, I know a lot of students can sometimes feel a little bit like I've, you know, I've left this community of 1,500 people living on campus now. So we're, we're working on that piece as well. Um, and we're going to be facilitating workshops for students about you know, working with leases and landlords and um, how, it, you know, roommates, how, because it's all, how it's going to look really different than when they live in the residence halls. And then also, they're going from a residence hall where that's one kind of community to into a, a community where there's working adults. And so trying to help students be successful with, with that transition and what it is to be a good neighbor as well. So those are some of the housing options that we have for off-campus people moving off campus. This is our contact information. Are there questions that you all have about the off-campus process and benefits? Are there benefits for a kid to move off campus versus being on campus? Um, well, I work with on-campus housing, so obviously I have a little bit of a bias. But I think when I talk with students about, and the question is, what are the benefits living on versus off? I think that they like the independence of it, and as they get a little bit older, they really appreciate that that piece of kind of feeling like they're a little bit more on their own and they're taking on a little bit more responsibility. I think that's one of the things that they really like about living off campus. We do have a, a large commuter population, but um, it's not, most of our students commute from like two miles away. So they're living in an apartment or in a house with, with friends. Um, I think the thing that I hear most from students about, I really want to live off campus is because there's, they just feel there's more independence with that. You yeah. said that you have hired an off-campus housing position? We're in the process of, of filling that position. Okay, so right now the students will need to fill out this on-campus housing application by March 14th. Is there, there's, no, uh, go, there's no go to person? They can go to the housing office and talk to them as well. We're just, we're trying to beef it all up. But there are people that can, they can talk to, and we do have some search, um, pieces on our website right now what, what, where would they, where would they on the housing res, resident site website there's some off-campus housing yeah info. yeah um, so what do you hear from the community for students that are living off campus so the question is what do we hear from the community from students who are living off campus do you mean right from the, the students or do you mean the people who are living in the community There are there are quite a few where students are living off campus in homes. I think you must get feedback from people who are living in the community about. I think there um, that transition from. I think there are, a lot of our students are great. I think there are some. There is a you know the life that a college student lives versus the life that a working adult and a working family lives is really different. And so we are working with students on understanding that. For them, life sort of starts and begins at 10 p.m., where for, for working adults, life is turning off at that point. And so we do work with, with students on those issues to help them so that they can socialize and be fun be, and have fun because we know that they're going to do better. They're going to be more successful. If they feel like they have a vibrant social life, they're going to do better. They're going to get done quicker. There's a lot of research that shows that. So we want students to have fun, but we want them to do that in a way that's neighborly and respectful. So that's part of those pieces that we're working with students on, on educating um, them on that. What, what are you doing right now to educate them about that? Because you're working on some pieces. 
Well, we've done programming and we meet with students. Um, we've met with neighbors as well. Um, so there have been lots of sessions that students can participate in and we've had, and again, we meet with them individually on that. Is there uh, community ordinances about noise and the hours for noise? And yes. They do. Um, the noise ordinance begins at 10 p.m. and so after 10 p.m. Um, the noise needs to be contained within the house. Um, and sometimes OPD will be called and then they'll contact public safety to go out and assist if they have identified that they're, it's a Chapman students that are involved in a particular incident. Yes. Well, we really want folks to be picking housing that need housing because they, um, they're planning on living on campus um, because we do, you know, it is a finite thing and I don't want to be holding a bed for someone that's really not going to be living there and have someone else on a waiting list that is desperate for housing. Um, so after we really, housing assignments go out on July 1st and after that deadline, um, we would, they would likely forfeit their deposit if they cancel after that. July 1st. July 1st is the date for what? That if you cancel your housing after that date, you'll forfeit your deposit. And what, how much is the deposit this year? It's 600. But if your student is a current resident, then they like, likely should already have the deposit on file and then an additional right. deposit is not required. It carries over from year to year. Yeah. And submitting the application uh, by March 14th does not uh, bind them to on-campus housing or guarantee them a spot. So I just recommend that if there's any chance that your student is going to want to live on campus for next year to apply by March 14th. Um, and then they can always decide, like, I, like Deanne said, uh, before July 1st if they decide that they want to cancel. But if they don't apply by March 14th, then it becomes a little trickier um, because they'll need to um, They'll, their priority is affected at that point. Do you find that it's less expensive for people to live off campus versus on campus? Um, I think there's a lot of things that are included in on campus housing that, that folks don't always factor in. So the rent amount may be less, but you're paying for your utilities. Um, you're paying, there may, uh, the food costs are not included in that. And so I think it's a much closer apples to apples. Now it depends on where you're living and what you're choosing. I think that there are options off campus that students can choose that are more, that are cheaper than living on campus. I think there are lots of students that are living off campus that are spending more than what they would be if they were living on. So I think that's sort of hard to say because it depends on what they're picking. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Generally, yes, either six months or a year. And I don't, I mean, we would certainly want to work with landlords, but I don't s honestly see that changing. I mean, they're, they're going to want to keep their, they have every desire to keep that full 12 months a year. And so even if it went down to a 12 month, they'd probably raise the nine month rate. So it would be, they'd get the same amount of revenue. So. Okay. I mean, I would say the sooner that they can start that, the better. I think most students try to figure those pieces out in a, if they're living off campus, April, May, June. Would you agree um, that that's when they're finding their housing and signing their lease and and those kinds of, of pieces? I think the sooner you can get into it, the probably the more options that you're going to have because you'll beat the crowd in terms of um, you know other every, everybody else will be in the process. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, we anticipate they're going to be helpful. I mean, it, it's really that's really going to be resources. It's not going to be securing housing for students off campus. Students will still need to be doing that. But we're just trying to get more information for them so they can have a lot of other, you know, data when they're making their choices. Right. right. Yeah. Um, is there a housing board here? I know when I went to college many eons ago, there was like a housing board where you can actually, and I guess maybe you don't even now because there's websites. But well, we do have that as well, but mostly it can get posted on, you can post it on the website. So if you're looking for, if you're living off campus and you're looking for one roommate, the students can post that on the website. Um, I mean, I would say that they definitely would want to go out and check it out. Um, I don't know if there's any specific neighborhood I would say no. I think there are um, areas in, sort of across in all the cities that, you know, they might want to take a little closer look at. So I would encourage them to do, um, really check it out. I wouldn't sign anything sight unseen to go check it out and see what it's like. Because if the price is really low and it's not comparable with other Apartments, I would want to know why <laughs> is it really low? Because there's probably a reason for it. Other questions? Yes. Going back to the on housing, um, on campus housing, um, is there an opportunity to tour like Sandu and Blast? Because generally, when you take the campus tours, usually those are for incoming freshmen and they show you the freshman dormitories. We don't have options today. Students we can work with, and I don't, I, th I don't think they have any trouble getting in to see the spaces, so they'll be able to um, get in, and if they need any assistance with that, we're more than happy to help with that. Um, I, we don't have tours available today for parents to go. I mean, you're welcome to go over and take a look around, um, and oftentimes students will accommodate if they use, you know, ask nicely, but I don't, we don't have any tours today. My son is at uh, North Moreland, and actually he's really enjoyed that experience, um, especially because him being able to have the doors open right. and being in, being in the hallway is great friends with all, all yep. the kids in his hall. And so that's been really nice, whereas um, was the freshman one that uh, all the doors were closed? Henley? Henley and Paul, and that's, that's a fire code thing, believe yeah, me. I, I, yeah, I understand, but it, it, it yeah, it, absolutely. And, you know, yep. the life experience there. Yep. So with that kind of a background, what what are Sandu and Blast in general? Are they, are they almost exactly like Henley in that regard? Or? Well, they are indoor. I think there are some spaces in Sandu mm -hmm. that open to the outdoors, so we don't have we don't have the fire code issue. So students, that's not uh, the door. And it's just so everyone knows the door propping, um, the fire marshal requires that we don't allow students to prop open their doors because those are fire doors. Um, so, but in Northmoreland, where it's outside, that doesn't matter. There are a few rooms in San Diego where that, that are like that, but they are, the rest of them are internal hallways where they aren't, they aren't able to prop open their doors. But they get, they really do have very vibrant communities. So I, I mean, I get that that's one of the great benefits of Moreland is the quad and being able to have the doors open and, um, but yeah, they, unfortunately in Glass and San Diego, those are internal corridors. And he could potentially look at the South Moreland, the oh, yeah. other side of Moreland, um, That's because true. that also um, it opens to the outside the same way as North Moreland does, and South Moreland is for returning students. And they have um, a private bath in South Moreland, yes. so it's not a suited bath. Yes, they have a private bathroom, so it's not two rooms that share a bathroom. Each room has its own bath. Okay. Other questions? Everybody, parents of first-year students, sophomores, first year. Sophomore, so a couple of sophomores, a couple of freshmen, yeah? Okay. How are, how are, oh, go ahead. Another question. Um, during this past week, there have been sessions where the students were supposed to, had the opportunity to show up to ask questions. Um, my son, I think for good reasons, wasn't able to attend, mm -hmm. and you know, he was studying for tests and things like this. Is what they were presented in any relation to what we just heard? They, was, it, was it kind of, was it the same thing? It, um, Michael did those sessions. We actually go in more in depth. This is more of an overview. Okay. And those sessions, they'll take, Michael takes them through the portal so they oh. see every page and know exactly how it's going to look. Um, 
if he wants to come up to the housing office, someone and someone would be happy to sit down and, and provide him that information. So even if he wasn't able to go to the session, he can still get that info. Yes, and we are looking because the sessions last week were so well attended. I am planning on adding some additional oh, how to apply good. sessions for this coming week, and I'll notify okay. residents once those are scheduled. Um, and then we'll also be offering kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, counseling sessions for housing selection um, with both myself and uh, my supervisor, our assistant director, okay. um, for students to come in and talk one-on-one -on -one about their questions with housing selection. And so once those dates are set up, we'll let them know how to schedule those appointments. And then the, the time slots when they pick are in the evening, I think 6 to 11 p.m. Because yes. um, I know people have things going in the evening as well, but it seems to be the best time in terms of yes. the f fewest. But we w housing office stays open. So if they're on the portal and for whatever reason they're having troubles, we'll be open until 11 p.m. and they can come and, and meet with somebody. So they got lots of support in that process. And where's the housing office? Davis Community Center. It's kind of... If you're Okay, it's sort of kitty corner from the parking structure, the Jim Miller parking structure. Other questions? How's the year going? First year, parents of first years, is it going good? Yeah. Sophomore year going well? Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, I think that that's, those are the things, the pieces that we wanted to talk to you about, but if you have individual questions, we'll be here to answer them as well.